Hello and welcome to my channel. You know, one of the things I really don't like is when I use music or a song for my video and it's copyright free, it's free to use, but then a few years down the road it's no longer free and I have to either try to edit my video or delete it altogether. Well, this was the case here. This is a video of one of my older drawings and I had to re-upload it. I hope that you'll enjoy it. This uh, is based on a poster for a movie Gunfight at the OK Corral with Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas. It's a very old classic western movie, a very good movie. If you haven't seen it I recommend that you do because you know lots of these older movies are better than the stuff they make today. Anyway, like I said I'm re-uploading this and um, I hope You'll like it, so let's get on with the drawing process. So I don't have the entire footage. As you can see here, I already started with the drawing process. I have done the drawing of Bert, and now I'm going to draw Kirk. And uh, I also did a little bit of the background. Now as for the tools, I'm using Master Touch woodless charcoal pencils here, medium and soft, two grades, and I'm also going to use a black colored pencil for some of the details. The background, I shaded that with a bit of charcoal powder just to create some contrast uh, with the lighter details of my main characters. Anyway, uh, now I'm going to focus on the other part of this drawing and I'm going to show you how I did the drawing of Kirk Douglas. So, uh, for the most part, I'm going to work with a medium charcoal pencil. Of course, it's uh, impossible for you to tell which one is medium and which one is soft, uh, because they more or less look the same, but uh, I use the medium one most of the time. They're both pretty dark, but the soft one is a little bit darker. Now, the approach I chose here was to draw some of the darker lines first, and then use the blending tools to push away from those uh, darker bits onto the lighter areas basically using whatever I had of the material of the charcoal dust on the paper to shade gradually by moving that charcoal residue uh, onto, the, uh, onto the lighter areas. I find that this is a very um, easy and quick uh, way to shade and at the same time you don't really use a lot of the material because you, you get to you get to use the residue you just push it around as you can see I'm shading away from the darker parts of the head and the darker details on the head onto the lighter details basically leaving those areas of lighter value where needed so I'm using my blending tools to explain the general topography of the face and later when I need to refine some of the smaller details and maybe add some textures and things like that I can use my pencils on top of that. I can either use a charcoal pencil or a black colored pencil. The black colored pencil that I used here is a Primo black colored pencil but it doesn't really matter which brand you use. Uh, I often use uh, either the Kohinoor or Faber-Castell uh, black pencil but the thing is that in a lot of these smaller drawings where there is a lot of detail I was often reluctant to rely on charcoal pencils alone. Now this can be done with nothing but charcoal pencils because the medium charcoal pencil can be sharpened really well and can produce some really fine detail but uh, I just find that it's uh, easier to control the amount of value and some of the smaller details when you're using something a little bit harder and a little bit lighter like a black colored pencil. So I've, uh, I've often been known to use a combination of charcoal and a black pencil. But like I said, you don't have to. You don't have to do it. There are lots of my drawings where I use nothing but charcoal. Anyway, as you can see here in this part of the drawing process, I'm using that black pencil to add a little bit of texture to the face and to add some smaller details like uh, the eyebrows, which are barely visible here because uh, they are of lighter color and because the reference photo is also a little bit overlit. 
uh, so don't be surprised at the contrast. Now another interesting thing is the contrast between the top of the head and the background and this is where, why I decided to include, include that slightly darker background uh, to create that contrast uh, with the top of the head uh, which is uh, where the hair, hair is slicked back and it's kind of shiny and the darker background. So I, I was mostly happy with the with Kirk's face and now I'm just going to move on and do uh, his fancy clothes and the rest of the body and uh, I'm going to use a more or less similar approach here as you will see I'm going to draw some of the darker bits using a medium charcoal pencil and then I'm going to um, push away the material and shade into those lighter areas creating some gradual transitions and of course there's also a little bit of background to be finished as well so uh, when you're drawing clothes and I'm not a big fan of drawing clothes but here because I'm drawing uh, I have to include the guns and everything uh, I had to do more of their bodies so uh, you have to be able to draw all of these folds in the clothes around the uh, around the shoulders, around the elbow area, everywhere the the arms and the body bends. So those folds in the clothes will be following uh, the the motion of the body. And uh, it's not that difficult to do, as you can see. I just laid down some charcoal and I pushed that charcoal powder around, pushing it a little bit more and adding a little bit more into those darker areas where, the, where those creases or folds are a little bit darker. To, to further refine that, I can always go back and use a pencil eraser to remove a little bit of value and make those folds even, three, even more three-dimensional. Um, as always, there are some details that I can't really make out altogether from the reference. And the reference will be included in the description if you want to check it out. But as always, there are some details which I won't be able to make out, so I just uh, simplify them a little bit. Simplification and approximation is a very useful tool when you're trying to draw uh, things that are that look realistic but aren't photorealistic. Anyway, just doing a little bit more of the background here, as you can see. The background is kind of an out of focus, blurry background that is just there to create a bit of contrast with the um, lighter details on the main subjects. I'm just cleaning up some of the edges here around the gun and the hands. The hands are a very important part of the drawing because uh, they're often neglected but they're very complex to draw and uh, if you oversimplify them or if, we, if you neglect them that, that'll ruin the impression, the overall impression of the whole drawing so you have to take the time to do a little bit more work on the hands just like you did on the faces even though people just normally want to focus on the faces or at least I do because uh, I'm used to drawing a lot of portraits and uh, as you can see I'm adding some light details here and there mostly uh, using an, a pencil eraser, a Kohinoor pencil eraser where needed and doing a bit of blending to smooth out some of these areas uh, which I shaded with a pencil and I ended up with a with a texture that was a little bit too much so I can always go back on top of that and smooth it out a little bit. Anyway, the drawing is almost finished. I'm going to put my signature here in the lower left corner as you can see. So here it is. Here's the finished drawing. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I'm sorry for uploading an older video but I'm sure that a lot of you haven't seen it and I hope that you like it. Now don't forget to subscribe and give me a like, comment, let me know what you think, check out my other videos. And for those who want to see a lot more content, uh, longer videos, real-time footage, you should check out my Patreon because you'll find a lot of that there. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.